Previously, we have spoken about casting Newton's second law in terms of momentum, and we have said that the net external force equals the change in momentum. And we have said that if the net external force is zero, then the total momentum in a system will be constant, or in other words, its change will be zero. An inertial system is, for one, is one for which we can draw a box around the system and be sure that there will be no net external force crossing the boundaries of this box. So an inertial system is defined by the boundary that we have to draw around it and how inclusive we have to be in order to find a system for which there's no net external force acting on the system. We often seek these kind of boxes that we can draw around a system because then we are aided in Newton's laws problems by being able to say that the total momentum of a system will be constant. So it may be the case that our box will have some external forces coming into the system across the boundaries of the box, but all we really need to be sure, assured of is that the external force in total is equal to zero. In other words, any force coming in from the left is balanced by some force coming in from the right, or any force coming in from the top is, equal, is balanced by some force coming in from the bottom. If we can find such a system and such a box that we can draw around it in which the, the f total force crossing the boundary is zero, then momentum for the system will be a constant. We can develop some practice finding inertial sy systems by considering the following question. Could we throw a ball, a tennis ball for example, at a car and expect it to move down the road? In other words, does throwing the ball at the car make for a good motor? Here the answer is yes, because if we drew a box around the cart itself and left out ourselves and the ball, then the cart is an inertial system. There are forces acting on the cart. There's the normal force of the ground and the gravitational force pulling down, but those exactly cancel, and the net external force on the ball on the cart itself is initially zero. However, when we throw the ball at the cart, we can now say that there's an external force coming in and acting on the cart, and it's a net external force because it's unbalanced by anything else. And therefore, we've used this idea of an inertial system and found when it exists and then identified the ball as an external force. So we can use that to help us solve and say that, yes, this would make for a good motor. We can consider a variant on this problem and say, if we ourselves are standing inside the cart and throw the ball at the side of the wall of the cart, does this make for a good motor? Well, now the answer is no, because if we draw a box around the cart, we are, are, and the tennis ball are part of the inertial system, and therefore we expect the momentum to be constant. If the momentum of the cart was zero before we throw the ball, it will be the total momentum will be therefore zero after we throw the ball. And in fact, the act of throw, us throwing the ball forward and giving the ball some forward momentum will cause the momentum of the cart and us to go backward. And it's only when the ball hits the cart that we expect the, the cart momentum and the ball momentum to change direction. And in fact, one can imagine this tennis ball ricocheting back and forth inside the cart and the cart moving slightly forward and slightly backwards over and over again as this ball bounces back and forth. So this would not make for a very good motor. Another question which helps us look at inertial systems is if we have two masses, one of one kilogram and another of a three kilograms, and they're joined by a thread and slid along a horizontal frictionless surface at speed v, imagine what would happen when this thread is cut. What would their final speeds, v1 and v3, be equal to? Well, if we think about this problem, the answer to this will be that the is none of the choices given here, that v1 and v3 are both still just equal to the initial speed, v. And why is this the case? Because when this string is cut, or even before this string is cut, we may identify this pair of masses as an inertial system. There is no net external force acting on these pair of masses because there's, again, only gravity pulling down 
and the normal force pushing up. These counteract and therefore are balanced and therefore the momentum of the system will be a constant. In fact, if they're moving at constant speed, then the tension in the string between them is zero and we could even have drawn a, bo a box around each of the masses such that each mass would be an inertial system and therefore the momentum for each individually would be a constant.